Ava and the third round conversion you talked about on Saturday. What was the biggest thing with those? Was it the play calling or was it the execution? Um, you know, you can always say a little bit of both, to be honest with you. You always say, guess yourself, wish you would have called a little bit better play, but no question, a couple of them, we definitely had a chance to get them. You know, just wish you would execute a little bit better, but I think anytime something like that happens, the best way to get it solved, first of all, tell the players that, tell yourself that, first of all, to yourself. You know, wish you would have called something a little bit better, but we definitely had a chance to convert them. You, you guys have been pretty successful on fourth down. Um, yeah. You've a lot of fourth downs. So What's the key to that? Um, I think just good, doing a good job of both things that you just said. <laughs> doing, you know, some good calls and some good execution. I mean, it, it always really comes down to execution. And then once in a while, you have what coaches say is an eraser. You know, sometimes, like that happens to us sometimes on defense, you have it stopped, but you just have a player make a great play and he's an eraser. So, but I think uh, our fourth downs, we've done a really good job of this year, and we just got to continue to do that. Expect Matt to, to go this, this You know, we got to see. I think what, right now he'd be, you'd have to say he's questionable. But um, I, I'm hoping so. But I feel great if, if Jake's really well prepared and will do a good job either way. But uh, right now, I would say Matt's kind of 70 30, whether he'll go or not. When you look at Matt, you, you look at the numbers, they don't look that bad, but he's turned the ball over six times. Two times against Wofford didn't come back to hurt you, but yeah. it, you could you could argue that it kind of swayed the momentum on Saturday. Do you, do you talk to him about that, or what do you say about his? Yeah, his you turnovers? always work on that. You know, that's something that we talk about going into every game. How well we take care of the ball is, is a great whether we have a chance to to go win or not. You know, his first one, you know, he was getting hit, and that defensive lineman clicked out and made a great catch. You know, that one. You know, I I, I would have to put that one up to, uh, you know, baby. Put it on me, you know. With you, you got to put it on someone. I wouldn't necessarily put that one on Matt. Um, the second one, the receiver fell down. So ultimately, it always comes down usually to the head coach and the quarterback who gets the blame. So let's put those two on the head coach. No, last year you played him. I think you said that uh, Arkansas State. That is, you said uh, the first half. You know, at that point during the season, you guys probably played the best you had up to that point, and then the second half maybe the worst. So going over that tape, uh, you know, what did you kind of see? I know there were a lot of turnovers in yeah, the second half. Yeah, we turned the ball over too much. Um, there was times in the game where I thought we ran the ball really well. Um, there was a lot of times in the game where I thought our team played very physical, you know, and, um, you know, they're a good football team, so in no way can you turn it over like that. And it's just something we can learn from. We're going to go down there. Um, it's, it's a tough place to play. It's, it's really a great atmosphere. The crowd really gets after it. And um, so it should be a lot of fun, but uh, our guys – and have a great week of practice, be very confident, go down there and play the best we can. What's the, what's the key to slowing down, stopping, containing uh, Michael, Go Michael Gordon? Uh, yeah. You know, you got to get everyone around him. You got to really fly to the ball, and you got to um, just gain, you know, three, four, or five guys tackle him. I think it's the best thing. I think by what quarterback plays, it, it's easier or harder to stop him. You know, when Freddie's playing, when the, the starter's playing, it's even harder to stop because he's so mobile and can make plays too. Um, I think in the Toledo game, they did a little bit better job of focusing on him because, the you know, the other quarterback's more of just a passer. Are you guys preparing as if Freddie's going to play? It looks like that too. we got to play for, prepare for both of them. You know, it looks like either one, you know, you're not sure, so you got to prepare for both. Obviously, it wasn't easy, the, the opponents that you played at home, but you started the season three or four games at home, and now the road the road games really start to kick in. You, you're kind of kicking yourself because you had such a favorable schedule as far as home and road, and you're just one and three. Um, you know, you just take it one game at a time. You know, I think that's the way you got to go, and you move on to the next game, and you try to prepare and get better each week. Um, you know, Ohio obviously has turned out to be a very good football team. You know, had a chance to beat Minnesota at the end. Um, Georgia Southern is the best team in the league. So you got to try to win those home games, no doubt. But our guys also can look at those tapes and see how, how much they've improved and how far we've came, and, and we just got to keep doing that and go get, us, go get us some wins on the road. When you get to the fourth quarter of these games where you guys are within a touchdown or two, is it something you can teach to, to give them the, the killer in instinct to win these games, or is it something they have to do with them, by themselves? I, I think both. I think you got to keep, you know, I, th I think we did it in one game. We were close, I think, last week, to be honest with you. Some of that was they just wore us down. You know, they played two platoons of guys, you know, on both sides of the ball. And our guys played, you know, about as hard as you can. And we just don't necessarily have the depth that they have right now. And a little bit of it was just getting worn down. And, 
and we just got to keep fighting and keep improving and improve our depth and, and hopefully find a way to win those games. Is that the biggest difference between programs like, like yours and Georgia Southern and, and Arkansas State is the depth that probably that position? Yeah, probably. I think a lot of times if you just if you just had to go top eleven against top eleven, it's it's a lot closer. It's when you get to the to the depth, you know, and the backup guys, sometimes that's where it, that's where it shows up a little bit more. Uh, I'm sure you were aware of the uh, the mass email that was sent out yesterday by yeah. uh, someone alleging to be a member of the football team. Uh, do you have any uh, response to that? You know, it was it's a it's an email sent by someone that wouldn't sign their name. So I'm not really. I was really uh, the, what I stand by is what our captains came out and what they wrote and what the whole team predominantly signed. And so, um, you know, I know that I come to work every day and work as hard as I can. I know we've never broken any NCAA rules. We had two days of two days this last fall camp. So, you know, we coach as hard as we can. We work as hard as we can. And I really firmly believe that there are so many players that came in and out of my office yesterday. They know the love that I have for them. They know that I have their back, and I'll live by how I work. Did you did you address the team at all? Uh, no, in that situation? not yet. Because we didn't. Monday's our day off. The players had their own team meeting, but no, I did not yet. Was, was Terry Johnson one of those players to, to, to come? Well, to unfortunately, you? Terry's name got drug into it, you know, and Terry's name it made it look like he sent it, which was really sad because Terry probably tells me five times a week, "Thank you, coach. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for everything you do for me." So it was really sad that his name got drug into it. Uh, when, when things like this do happen, how do you prevent it from just being a, a distraction? Are you, you going to address it today? Or yeah, you talk about it, you know, and then one of the best things is our players addressed it. You know, our players addressed it, and they said, you know, it's someone that's just trying to, to tear us apart, someone that's trying to pull us apart, someone that has their own agenda that, you know, and if you read the letter close, you can really tell it's someone that's never played football before. You know, so it's, it's just something that uh, they got people trying to take them apart. They got to come together, and we got to stay together, and move on and the most important thing this week is getting ready for this game. Can you turn something like that into a rallying point? Um, you said like the team come together on their off day, like is that... Yeah, I think it did. I think it showed the some of the great leaders that we have and they all came together and I think it definitely showed the unity that our players have together and and really the love that the players and the coaches have for each other. Do you feel it was written by someone on the team? No. No, I don't. Shall we move on to football questions, please? We're looking forward to Arkansas State. It'll be, it'll be nice to see something other than the triple option. <laughs> it will be nice, you know. If if Freddie plays, though, they still got a running quarterback. You know, they still do a lot of good things that he does running the ball. It's not necessarily a triple option, but um, he still he can really run around and make plays. He's a winner. I still remember watching him play in high school, you know, and um, he's just a winner and a great player. But Actually, it'll be nice not to play the triple for a week, yes. It'll, it'll, I bet you, as happy as anybody will be, it would be Quentin Bradley. They're going to draw back and pass and go try to get some sacks, which I think he will. Will be uh, good for you to go back down to Arkansas, or are you going to see anybody you know down there? Or um, it's kind of the, the other side of the state. Yeah. You know, it's a long ways away. That would be like, you know, Idaho and Boise. It's a long ways away, so I don't know if I'll see any of the people that, you know, that I know. I, I think a couple of... A couple of our close friends are going to make the long drive, so I'll see a couple of people. Sometimes when teams go on the road, I know it's not like an NBA team that goes on a 10-game road trip, but you kind of come together a little bit, you yeah. know, not as many distractions. Is, is that true? I think it helps, you know, and I think when you take the long plane rides, what it helps is you only have so many hours a week that you can prepare, and but you have that whole plane ride that you can prepare, you know, so I think that... That helps you get that much more preparation this day and age with the iPads, and you can go back and sit with the players, and you get extra work in, and and I do think it helps you come together and it gets you extra extra preparation. Uh, a couple personal questions. Expect to have Jay Sean back? Don't know yet. You know, don't know yet. I would say that would be questionable also. What about uh, Jacob Sannon? Is he the same? Oh, same. The same. And Ryan Edwards. Ryan Edwards, I think, is is a better chance. Yeah, but you know, it's just something that um, you don't necessarily want to tell everybody, you know. But as of right now, I would say all of them are questionable. With guys like uh, Leonard and, and David, when do you consider when you're going to register? If you're going to register those guys, how long pretty do you soon. Wait? Pretty soon. Yeah, definitely pretty soon. You know, hopefully. Um, just saw David in the hall a little while ago, and he he seems really 
upbeat and optimistic and hoping that he's going to be back pretty soon. You know, having that bye week next week. So that's when it will probably determine. Got the bye week next week, you know, they're ready to go after that or are they not? How do you think the receiving core has done, you know, in their absence? Um, I think they've stepped up and, and really competed and, and done a good job. It's just tough. You know, you go from fall camp when Jacob was making all kinds of plays. David was making the most plays of anyone besides Dez. Dion was making all kinds of plays, and really Dion hasn't been all the way back yet either. He's still, he still, he just really went out there with great toughness and played the snaps that he played the other day. Um, so it, it hurts a little bit, but it's made other guys step up and, and get reps, and so ultimately it'll make us a lot, you know, give us a lot more depth. But right now, guys just got to continue to improve and step up. They can't really, they can't obviously mimic his speed, but is there anything else other guys can do to mimic maybe what Dez is doing to kind of equal his production? Well? Yeah, they, you know, I, I do think they're trying to mimic his work ethic at practice. You know, he goes 100 miles an hour at practice. Yeah, he's really into it. He's, he's upbeat. He concentrates, and I think that is carrying over into into that group, and um, I think they'll continue to improve. You know, the, the, one, the one young guy that has all kinds of talent that it was good to see back out there on Sunday night was, was Boston. You know, so it would be great to get him back out there also. What does it say about Des to be able to stay so focused? And I know he's leading the nation and, and receiving yards per game for everything that he's, he's gone throughout the field. It's, it's you know, I just think it's, it's what, what I'm hoping that it's going to end up being, a successful story, you know. There's kind of there's two big words in this world really. There's forgiveness and hate. You know, and what what you give with forgiveness is you give somebody a chance to to grow. You try to help them. You try to make them improve. You try to hopefully and everything ends up successful. You know, and then you have a lot of people out there who just have hate. And people that have hate just try to tear people down. Try to pick people apart. Try to destroy those people. So, you know, I think if anyone on our whole team they can learn to have forgiveness in this world. You know, instead of hate, because really in the end, if you have forgiveness, you're going to be happy. Your, your life's going to be good. If all you're filled with is hate, your life's not going to be, you're going to be miserable regardless. Hey, when would the safety duo of uh, Armand and, and uh, Jordan Grafsky start the game? What do you think uh, of those two that are starting? I thought they both played really well. You know, I thought Armand ran around and made tackles and was very aggressive and did good things. And I thought Grafsky played really well the last two weeks. Did some good things. Was that switch more of uh, those guys kind of ascending, or Russell maybe uh, taking a step back at all? No, I think it was those guys ascending. Those guys really stepping up their game and playing better. I, I think Russell's still going to be a great player for us all year too. Does Grabsky get to go this week? That's we still need to see. Do you have an update on Isaiah Taylor? Is he because you never necessarily said he was dismissed yeah. from the team? Is he still around the team? Does he still have a chance to come back yet this year? Or? Isaiah right now is going to school. He goes to study all every day when we're at practice. Anything else? Okay. okay. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Thanks, good.